Let's pivot to the NFL because uh, you talked about Indianapolis becoming a football town and a football community around the winningest decade in NFL history that you and the boys were a part of that obviously has this Lucas Oil Stadium thing down here. Okay, we had a little bit of a thing. Okay. Hey, Colts fans are back, Peyton. Colts fans are back, all right? Gardner Minshew. Almost won the AFC South. Gardner Minshew yeah. made it to the Pro Bowl. Now we get Anthony Richardson back. We have Shane Steichen. Jonathan Taylor, we got no contract disputes going on. He's all in. We got Pittman paid. The defense is back. We're going to do this. It's all the way back in Indianapolis. Then there's this team in Houston. Like This team in Houston was supposed to be crop. They were supposed to be crap. They were supposed to be trash. They were supposed to be a dumpster fire forever. Then D'Amico Ryans comes in. C.J. Stroud, this kid, has the greatest rookie quarterback season in the history. Should I be excited about what the Colts are doing, or are we now living in the Houston Texans world in the AFC South, do you think, Peyton? You make a great point, Pat. I mean, you know, for years, like, you always wanted to be the bully in the conference, right? That, that was kind of our theme, right? Let's win the division. You win the division – you have a chance to get in the playoffs, right? That was the Patriots' motto. That was our motto all those years, and you felt like we could. Now, the AFC South, yeah. look, it, it's it's quarterback heaven, right? I mean, Levis, I'm a big fan of him. Uh, big big fan of Trevor Lawrence. He'll bounce back. Anthony Richardson, we got to keep him healthy, right? Yeah. When he's healthy, look out. But I think the bully in the conference is C.J. Stroud over there in Houston, right? He had an incredible first year, like. I think about my rookie yeah. year, Pat, and like, you know, I kind of say it's so hard as a rookie, all these interceptions. C.J. Stroud says it's not that hard. He went out and dominated as a rookie. So uh, I think you're right. I think that division kind of goes through Houston. And obviously, you know, D'Amico, look, they have a target on their backs, right? Everybody knows who they are. They're not sneaking up on anybody, but they're going to answer that challenge. Uh, but it's, it's a great division. But, like, I'm a big fan of Stroud. I got to know him. I coached him at the Pro Bowl uh, this year, Pat. Uh, humble guy, hard worker, super talented, just nice to, you know, my son, nice to all the fans there. I didn't get to know him. He didn't come to our football camp, Pat. He had a team commitment that he honored, and uh, I kind of felt bad. You know, he kind of got criticized for not coming to the camp. NFL people kind of said, Hey, you were supposed to go. You didn't go. And I, I kind of missed that. I probably could have come out and clarified that, hey, he never committed to come. It was all good. So I actually apologized to him uh, recently about kind of the criticism he had to face from NFL teams in his combine interviews. That was ridiculous. But uh, big fan of him. Um, so, yeah, look, I'm all on the Colts bandwagon. But we got to do something about these other teams in the AFC South. Amen. Amen. We certainly do. And that Houston city is the one that we really got to worry. They brought in Stephon Diggs. They bring in Joe Mixon. Yep. Casario seems to have a massive Italian brain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is down in Houston. It wasn't supposed to be like this. But we got massive respect for what they got going on. And that Manning passing academy, I remember that being a conversation yeah. piece. Oh, yeah. Because what they were trying to do to C.J. Stroud in that draft process was absurd. They brought out some test score. This guy, dumbest guy ever yeah mm -hmm. cj stroud guy and then the manning passing academy became a part of the storyline and it just was one thing after another now i would assume that cj stroud was appreciative of you saying like hey uh sorry that even became a thing because it did obviously you didn't mean for that or know potentially that it was taking place but like why does that happen you think and whenever you see him play the way he plays why do you think he is as good as he is is it in between years which is exactly what they were saying he was not in the draft cycle is it his accuracy what do you think it is exactly about him that makes him be the guy because they're expecting him just now it's like when patrick Mahomes is in like year four and they're like is he tom brady or not cj in his second year now they're like hey yeah win a super bowl dude Future. like that's crazy that it happens that quick for this guy why is it for him you think well, and there's a lot of reasons, and, and I can relate. Uh, and I told them this, you know, during those combine times, Pat, I think NFL teams are just looking to kind of pick at you, right, to kind of see. I remember when I was going through the combine, the, the early buzz was I didn't have any upside. I'm like, I'm 22 years old. Surely there's some upside in here somewhere. Surely I have it maxed out at 22, right? My neck hasn't even grown yet. There's a lot of room fan there. Uh, the forehead can get bigger. So, uh, but so look – Part of it, right? And They're it did. Pick. Hey, and it did. That was a good call. You always notice. <laughs> you know, red 18. They're gonna, yeah. They're going to pick at you, right? I think they're going to see how you respond to it. And, and, if, and I think if CJ probably used some of those criticisms to drive him to play even better, hey, Houston's luckier for it. But, 
look, he's got a presence about him. I mean, just kind of watching him down there at the Pro Bowl. Um, you know, like the Pro Bowl is a fun deal. Tua was our starter. Gardner went in. And then I kind of said, hey, CJ, are you good with the whole second half? And he's like, I'm good. I want to be in there. It's a flag game. But you still see a competitive guy that wants to win, that wants the ball in his hands in the fourth quarter. That's in a flag game. Just know what it's like in real football. So, you know, somebody asked me about Mahomes the other day, what made him so special. That calm and coolness in the fourth quarter, I think Stroud has that. Look, I'm not making this comparison right away, but there's just something about being calm and cool in those heated moments that serves quarterbacks well. Nobody was better than Tom Brady when it came to that. But I think Stroud has uh, has some of those characteristics. And I'm a big fan of D'Amico, too, right? He coaches hard. I played against D'Amico. He was a coach on the field. That's a pretty good combination there when you got D'Amico and Stroud, uh, you know, kind of a two-man monster there. Yeah, they've been very good to us. We've talked to D'Amico. We've talked to Casario. And then Stroud actually came and saw us whenever we were down in Houston for the national championship game. And it's like everything he does is like what you want, just like the same shit for you. Like everything you did was like what you want your teammate to do. He had one of his teammates fashion lines on when he came on the show. It was like, oh, what's the hoodie you're wearing? Oh, it's like our left guards brothers. Comp- yeah. Like <laughs> He's putting over like his company and then like he's not taking any compliments. He's like sending it other places. Wants to get back to work. Like dapped, what you're saying he talked to everybody. Dapped up like every camera person. Like cool though. Wasn't like, uh, yeah. wasn't like a full song and dance. It was just like a move. It's like everything he does is perfect. But Anthony Richardson is going to be a guy. Last question from us, and we can't thank you enough for all your time you have given us today about the NFL because it's kind of in your world, both, all things in your world. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah, Kayla, uh, sorry, Peyton. Obviously, you have all everything going on with the receiver. I don't know if you've seen the clips that have come out of the new hard knocks that's basically gone beyond the curtain with uh, the Giants' front office. Pat mentioned, you know, how players in the NFL – like enjoy this part of it because they they always wonder like hey what are these guys what is the head coach and the GM and the owner like what are they really saying about me behind closed doors I imagine that you were always privy to those conversations and probably involved with them but does it surprise you how much kind of unprecedented access uh, fans are getting of you know like a, a conversation between a head coach a GM and an owner when they're trying to construct the team. And it's it's typically stuff where you'd assume like, hey, these guys don't want anyone else on the planet to know about this. And we're getting to watch it unfold pretty much unedited every single week. Like, does it, does it surprise you where the NFL is going with this kind of unprecedented access? No, look, it's a great point. I think you got to give major props to the Giants, right? And, and, and Joe Shane and Dable – for allowing that access, right? Joe Shane, uh, his son's a young quarterback. He comes down to our football camps. I get to talk to him every year. And uh, look, that is not easy to do to allow that access, right? And these Saquon Barkley conversations, uh, that's real and raw. Uh, No, the truth is I was not privy to those conversations. I always believed in the chain of command, right? That look, I was the quarterback of the team, but I had no business being in on any type of conversations on contracts between other players. And it's funny, I actually didn't want to know from my agent, Tom Condon, what the Colts were saying about me in the negotiations, right? Oh, because, look. That's I, a I, smart you know, play. That's a smart I, play because I found out and I held grudges forever. <laughs> you know, because, look, I, I'm not, I mean, Bill Polian, you know, I take a bullet for Bill Polian, but I imagine in those conversations, he's probably saying, you know, he doesn't really throw that well to the left. The deep ball, the, it wobbles a lot. I'm not sure it's really worth it. That extra, you know, million dollars you're asking. Like, I don't want to hear that. Let's just block <laughs> it out. It's funny. As soon as you sign the contract, you know, uh, I held out for two days, Pat, in my rookie contract. And Tom Condon's kind of sharing some of these things. I'm like, I don't really want to hear that. I signed my contract. Bill Polian drives me to training camp. Oh. He and I are best friends. We're hugging it out the whole time. So it, I think that's good advice for all players. You don't really need to know everything they're saying about you in those, in those negotiations. Let's get it done, and let's go try to win a championship after that. Yeah, that's smart, because I heard the things that were said about me, you know, and then I was franchise tagged, and then I got to go into the building with this guy who just cut all my friends, including <laughs> including. <laughs> this. 
I think that's a great piece of information right there. Legitimately, I think that is a nice piece of information. We try to do it here in the office. One of the boys will see something that's written terribly about me, like saying terrible things about me, and they'll be like, hey, you want to hear it? I'm like, nah, don't want to hear it. I don't, I don't want to hear it because I don't have to hate that person forever. Like, that is, that is how I operate. So we just kind of move. That's a smart play by you. Very smart. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, like, negotiations, hey, these, you still got it at all? These contracts, and I know you're good. Oh. Man, just, I mean, if Archie and Olivia could have just had us a little bit later. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, hey, but you know what? I, I'm for it. I'm for it. I, I'm for these guys. I, I'm for that, you know, I understand older quarterbacks that, you know, maybe did, but like Johnny Unitas, Joe Montana, I mean, they paved the way for my generation. And now if, you know, Brady and Breeze and helps, you know, Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert, you know, Lamar, I'm for it, right? And, and just keep growing the game. Keep – look, we need great quarterbacks in the league. It makes the game better. All positions need to get better. So uh, I am uh, I, I am pro-current player all the way. I'm yeah. for it. I'm excited to see what they end up doing with it. Like, is there going to be a quarterback club again, I wonder? You know, because the salary – like, how's the new uh, CBA go? Because the percentage of – cap to the quarterback versus like what it's going to be and obviously if you have a quarterback you gotta mm -hmm. like that is just that is how it goes i'll be intrigued to see how roger and the nflpa kind of move forward with that but money's good for everybody caleb just got uh like 39 million guaranteed allegedly hadn't signed it that's old cba money for like number one overall you know <laughs> that's like old cba that they thought they kind of cut back we're back we're all the way back yeah. for the rookies i appreciate the hell out of you peyton Appreciate it, Pat. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, always fun to talk to you. Hey, uh, you going to Canton? Yeah, you got yeah. a little team going in the Hall of Fame. You're going to be there. Yeah, I'm heading over there. So it's um, it's the same day as SummerSlam, WWE got SummerSlam, it. which is in Cleveland. So as soon as SummerSlam's over, I'm coming to Canton. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Dwight Freeney, man. The best teammate. What a great player. Honored to see him going in. Hey, Peyton, how good – he was – and you were obviously a notorious good teammate. So is Tom Brady. So is Patrick Mahomes. Seems like that is a trend of everybody who is good. They, You have to be a good teammate because if your teammates know that you care and that you're a part of it, it's going to work out better. And I think you've always had – and I think Archie put that into your head too. Like, hey, we're having beers with the boys. We're hanging out. We're human. We're in this entire thing. Freeney was making like a million bucks a game and they weren't even playing him. Like after the, the last year after you left, and I'd known Freeney now for a little bit, and it had to be eating him up inside because he would still go on to have like another eight years of success. And he was just like the consummate teammate. We're talking like getting bought water for people, like doing that entire thing. And it's like this guy, Hall of Famer, changed football legitimately. Bill Belichick came out and said like, hey, we created like the chip block basically for Dwight Freeney. And it's like the thing that I always loved about Dwight Freeney is like, how good of a dude he was. Mm. Like, always just such a good dude. So we got a good one going into Canton next weekend. Yeah. Two weeks. Great teammate. I, I was thankful every day of my career, Pat, that Dwight Freeney was on my team. I didn't have to play against him. Belichick hated Freeney. Brady hated Freeney, which is in the ultimate complimentary way of hating someone, right? And uh, he just had that he just had that motor, you know, that great game against Jonathan Ogden probably put him in the Hall of Fame where Ogden's like, what am I supposed to do with this guy? So happy to see Dwight get honored, and it's going to be a special weekend there in Canton in a few weeks. All right, well, keep it going until I get there, you know. I've heard those things go a little late. Let's keep that thing going until I get over there so I can at least it. have one drink. Uh, I appreciate the hell out of you, brother. Stay out of that river, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Peyton Manning. Yeah, Peyton. Peyton. What a legend. Yeah, we're all pumped for Dwight, man. Yeah, that's sweet. That's a crazy weekend there. In Ohio. The Thursday to yep. Sunday. Yeah, Luke Combs in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame's in Canton. SummerSlam's in Cleveland. Mm. There's been potential opportunities at all of them, and so it's like trying to trying to figure out. Yeah, Yeah, in 24 hours. Which are good things. Obviously, these are good things, but definitely have to show face for Freeney for everything he's done for me. Definitely can't miss SummerSlam. Mm -hmm. For sure. So the fact that they are a 40-minute drive away from each other is yeah. the most glorious thing of all time. Perfect.